everyone, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel, Mooney Reads, where I talk about books and things. Actually, I mostly talk about books. In this video, I want to talk about my April TBR. And now before anybody asks or anybody wonders, I'm not doing the owls TBR thing. And the reason why I'm not doing that is because I realized that to do it, I would kind of have to pick up a bunch of books that I don't feel like picking up. So instead of doing that, I decided to just make a general TBR with books that I kind of want to read. And um, I'm just gonna say it, I've like reworked this TBR like five times. This is the final version of it. And yet, as always, I'm not promising that I'm going to stick to every single one of these books, but I'm gonna try my darn it. Another thing I wanna say is you are going to see a lot of Kindle books and audiobooks. The reason for that is, well, first of all, I have a Kindle and I like to buy books on there because in Spain, I don't know in the US, but in Spain, Kindle books are like two euros. <laughs> I think the most expensive one I've ever gotten has been five or at least, I think the most expensive one, actually I know the most expensive one has been seven euros. Um, that's really cheap compared to say 10 euros for a paperback book. So I buy a lot of Kindle books and I enjoy reading in my Kindle. It means that I don't have to turn a light on when my husband is sleeping and stuff like that. So there are a lot of Kindle books. There are also a lot of audiobooks because I like audiobooks. And finally, because as you can see and as you saw, if you saw my, what's it called? <laughs> my shelf rearranging thing, video thing, you saw that I have limited space when it comes to book storage. So as much as I enjoy buying books and having physical books, the reality is I don't have space for them. I wish I did sometimes, but the reality is that I don't. And while I do on haul books a lot because when I read a book and if I don't like it, I just basically donate it, that doesn't mean that I can constantly be buying books, which we'll talk about when my um, April uh, unboxing comes in because I went a little bit crazy in April, but that's not this video. This video is my April TBR. The first three books that I'm gonna show you are part of another video, which I am tentatively calling Books and Movie Blind Date, where I'm basically gonna read a book and then watch a movie, which I've never seen or read either of those things. So I've never read the book, I've never seen the movie, and I'm gonna read the book and see the movie and tell you what I thought about it. So for that, I'm gonna be reading first, um, I don't know if you can see it very well on my Kindle, but I'm gonna be reading Solaris by Stanislav Lem. Now, as far as I know, this book is about a bunch of astronauts that go to this planet where weird things start happening in the, in the ship that they're in, and they start kind of seeing people from their past that are dead. So that sounds really amazing. And as far as the movie goes, there's my cat. As far and as far as the movie goes, all that I know about it is that George Clooney's in it, and it's got a pretty good rating on Rotten Tomatoes and on IMBD. So I'm kind of excited to see it, and I'm very excited to read this book. I'm actually already halfway through this book because I tried reading it last year, but then I had to return it to the library. So uh, that's gonna be fun to film. <laughs> The next book I have in my book plus movie blind date thing is My Cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier. Now we all know that I love me some Daphne du Maurier and we all know from every single video that I film that I love Rachel Weisz. So basically, I am very excited to read this and as far as I know, this book is about this woman named Rachel who was married to the main character's cousin, and then that cousin died, so she comes to live with him, the cousin, and um, they start suspecting that she might have had something to do with his murder. So another kind of murder mystery thing, which I mean is what da Daphne du Maurier is all about, and I'm all about that too. So that's book number two for that video. And finally, the third book that I'm reading for my books plus 
movie blind date video is Brain on Fire by Susanna Callan. Now this book is actually a real account of a woman who had her life together, was living her best life, and then suddenly something starts happening to her. She starts having seizures, but nobody can understand really what is going on. It's not really seizures, and then they think it might be psych psychiatric, and it's kind of her trying to figure all of this out and the doctor that helps her. And the movie features Chloe Grace Moretz and it's on Netflix, so win-win for everyone involved. And by everyone, I mean me. Those are the three books I am gonna say that I'm gonna 100% get to because they're part of another video. And that other video includes Jane Eyre, which you will see in my March wrap-up because I didn't realize that Jane Eyre also had a movie. So when I did, I started vlogging my experience of reading Jane Eyre. And let me tell you, it's a lot funnier than I thought it was. Not the book, the book is not funny, but the experience of reading the book was funny to me. The next book I plan to pick up in April, I can't believe it's already April, but the next book I plan to pick up in April is Blood of Elves by Blood of Elves by Stanislav, but Stanislav who? By Andrzej Sapowski. I keep saying that wrong, Sapkowski, Sapkowski. And well, this is book number one in the Witcher series and I am so excited to read it. I still have to do my wrap up with Elfie from Ballet and Books about our thoughts on Sword of Destiny, but let's just say that I probably liked it because I'm picking up the next in the series, which is really weird for me as somebody that doesn't really like high fantasy novels. But this follows Gerald de Rivia, who by the way, I keep calling Gerald de Riviera in my head. It makes sense in my head, okay? But anyway, it follows his story, it follows his adventures as a witcher, and I'm pretty sure in this one we see a lot more of Ciri because in the previous two we see almost nothing of her and I'm kind of in love with her at the moment, so. The next book I plan to pick up in April is Beastly Bones, a Jacoby novel by William Ritter. Now, I actually read Jacoby in January and totally forgot to put it in my January wrap-up, so you're gonna see it in my March wrap-up, but I read it in January. It doesn't matter, I read it, I loved it. Jacoby is kind of like Sherlock Holmes meets Supernatural. Need I say more? It's a fun book. It's told from the perspective of the female main character who is this girl that decides to leave home and all of her luxuries in order to pursue her idea of becoming a great archaeologist, only to find that she is moneyless, she is penniless, and she is wandering the streets and she meets this weirdo man who tells her that she has a fairy on her shoulder. And of course she sees nothing there. But more and more he draws her into his world and he offers her the job of being his secretary and since she's got nothing else to do for money, she accepts. And what happens next is pretty magical. I actually really love that book, so I'm really looking forward to reading this second book. And there is kind of a romance in here, which I'm not a big fan of romances, but I'm so hoping that they go into it more <laughs> in the second book. And well, if you've never heard of Jacoby, if you want something kind of fun, you know, kind of to take you out of this whole coronavirus business, I 100% recommend that you read Jacoby book one and see if it's your jam. I mean, come on now. It's Sherlock Holmes meets Supernatural. Who, who doesn't like that? I, I don't know who doesn't like that, but I definitely do. The next Kindle book I plan to pick up in April is The Forest of Fallen Stars by the one and only Elfie Riverdale, who is ballet and books here on booktube. Now I want you guys to know that she didn't ask me to pick up this book. I just decided to because it's a gorgeous story, number one. From what I can tell, it's about a girl and a wolf and forest and there are fallen stars and, and it's middle grade. So <laughs> really, do I need to say more? I am so excited to pick this up and it was on Kindle Unlimited. I think it still is on Kindle Unlimited. And I asked Elfie if 
um, purchasing or downloading books through Kindle Unlimited helps her as an author and she told me that it definitely does. So if you really want to read something magical middle grade to do with forests and girls and wolves and all of these things, then please, please, please pick up this book. And it's a book that I am so excited to get to, which I have been saying for every single one of these books, but if I wasn't excited to get to them, I wouldn't have put them in my April TBR. And the final Kindle book that I plan to pick up in April is Lovely War by Julie Berry. Now, this book has been doing the rounds on YouTube, but just in case you don't know what it's about, it's about the goddess Aphrodite and the god Ares, the Greek gods of love and we're not gonna say war because he's not the god of war, he's actually the god of... I don't know how to say it, Sandwine War, basically when you lose control, but you know, semantics. But basically they're put on trial because people keep falling in love during times of war and the gods are kind of fed up with it. And love keeps... I, and I and I also think it's because love keeps causing wars. So they're put on trial and then they tell these stories as their defense of how love is actually not so horrible for war and why they shouldn't be tried for having humans fall in love during war. And as somebody that loves Greek mythology, I'm so into this, you have no idea. I am, I am down for it and I usually don't bite into hyped books, but this one is one that I will sink my pretty little teeth into and be very happy about it. All right, now let's get into the physical books that I wanna read during April. Now there are two of them that haven't arrived because I ordered them from Amazon and as we all know the world is a little bit crazy right now and Amazon orders are kind of taking a while to get here which I am totally okay with but when they get here I will definitely pick them up. But let's get with the ones that I have right now. And the first one is... La Sombra del Viento by Carlos Ruiz Zafón, which is The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafón, which is a story about a little boy during the Civil War who finds this library of, I think, magical and uh, forbidden books, and he wants to find out more about them, and that is literally all I know. Civil War, magical library, forbidden books. Do I need to know more? Well, there is one more thing I know, and that is that this is one of those beloved books for people who love books. And it's considered a modern day classic, and I am both really looking forward to it and kind of scared to read it. Number one, I'm looking forward to it because it sounds amazing, and number two, I'm kind of scared to read it because it's one of the few Spanish books that I am going to be reading for a while. And switching my brain from English to Spanish when I'm reading takes a while. And this is not a short book. I think this is, yeah, this is over 500 pages. This is almost 600 pages. So doing that, like just switching my brain from language to language um, to read something is kind of difficult. So I might actually begin with this one just so that like I don't read English, English, English and then go Spanish and my brain just kind of has like a meltdown over it. But I'm very, very excited to get to it. The next physical book that I have to read is Start Sight by Brandon Sanderson. I read Skyward in January and I loved it and I was supposed to read this in February but then I kind of went crazy and bought a bunch of books and I didn't get to it. So I want to get to it because I really love the story. I really love the characters. I want to see some more character growth. I want to see what happens. And I have the book here, so why not take advantage of that? And again, they did you wrong with the US cover. I will say that every single time that I see the US cover in my head and then see this incredible, incredible cover. I'm, I'm really sorry, US readers. They did you wrong. In case you don't know, this is the story of Spensa. Spensa is stuck in a planet. Nobody kind of knows why humans got there or anything. And then there are these creatures called the Krell who are trying to keep them in the planet. And also nobody knows why. And nobody understands why the Krell are trying to keep them in here. But somehow 
Spencer might be able to find a way out. So I, I am really hoping that this delivers because I loved the first book in the series. As I said before, Amazon is having a little bit of an issue delivering some of the books that I ordered, which is a-okay. I would rather people be safe during this time than they deliver books to me when I clearly have a complete bookshelf and library of books to read. But the books I did order that haven't gotten here that will be here in April are number one, Nevermore by Jessica Townsend. And this is basically the story of Morgan Crow, who is a little girl that was born on a day that is considered really bad luck. And every kid that is born on this day kind of disappears on their 11th or 12th birthday, I can't remember. And it turns out that they don't actually disappear, but that they go to a magical school a la Hogwarts, except that to get into the school, they have to go through a bunch of trials. And I've heard nothing but magical, whimsical, great things about this book. And I'm really, really excited for when it gets here and for when I have the ability to read it. And the final physical book that I plan to read in April is the Secret History by Donna Tartt. I mean, come on now. Am I the only person out there who hasn't read this yet? Yes. No. But it feels like it. Now, The Secret History by Donna Tartt is basically the current sweetheart of dark academia, which I don't know if that's a good term or a bad term. The sweetheart thing, because murder you know, stuff. But basically, it's the story about these groups of friends that go, I believe, to like a liberal arts college, and there, one of their friends dies. And it's them retelling the mystery of what happened. Perfect. I have loved this book already. I really, really hope that I love this book, seriously, because um, you'll see my thoughts about um, If We Were Billions by M.L. Rio, and I hope that this exceeds my expectations about it. And you thought I was done, didn't you? You thought that was it, Monica. That's like a billion books you're reading. But no, I'm not done. Not done yet. So let's get to the audiobooks that I plan to read in April. The first audiobook that I plan to start reading in April and that I might have already started reading before I started filming this video is Radio Silence by Alice Osman. Yeah, I got that. It's Alice Osman. Anyway, I actually know little to nothing about this audiobook, except that somebody said that it was actually a comforting read, and I need some comfort. I don't know if you've noticed that this list has a lot of comfort, but after my March reading month where I read a lot of intense books, I was like, can, can somebody please just comfort my heart right now? And apparently this book is about a girl that goes to college and somebody who has a podcast and then they kind of become friends but then this person stops making the pop the podcast and this girl goes to find them that's the gist of the story that i think it is it, i might be completely off but again you know i love going into books blind so that's what i plan to read and we'll figure out in my wrap up if i was completely wrong about that the next two books i plan to read are the final two books in Shanima Wire's a famed way were children series and that is come tumbling down and in an absent dream yes i plan to finish the series i read beneath the sugar sky last month and well you'll see in my wrap up what i thought about it but clearly i plan to finish the series so those are the next two audiobooks that I plan to get to. I don't know if it will be the next ones, but I plan to get to them at some point in April. And finally, the last audiobook that I plan to definitely get to in April is The Phantom of the Opera. The Phantom of the Opera. The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Leroux. Now, I have this book in physical form, but honestly, I have a lot of physical books to read. And as I've said before, I'm somebody that gets tired after reading about 150 pages. And a lot of the books that I plan to read in physical form are more than 150 pages. So I'm going to be alternating between the physical copy and also the um, audiobook 
uh, version of the book. Now, The Phantom of the Opera, I'm pretty sure you all know what it's about, but in case you don't, it's about this opera house that, said, that is said to be haunted by a ghost. And this ghost falls in love with the new lead ingenue girl that sings there. And it's romantic and it's beautiful and there is probably the most famous musical of all time <laughs> based off of this book it, to the point that I didn't even know it was a book until Emma from Emmy Reads mentioned it and now I definitely, definitely wanted to read it. And I also kind of wanted to include a classic in this book TBR because I feel that I'm lacking in classics this month. So there you are. Now those are the books that I plan to get to in April. And if we count that right, which I probably won't, that's about 15 books. That is a lot of books, but a lot of them are shorter books that I can get through two of them in one day, so it's not that big of a deal. That is why we have two bonus books that I added in here in case I can get to them and in case I don't feel like reading one of the other books and I want to read something else because, you know, mood reader. <laughs> so, so the first one I picked for this bonus round is The Three Body Problem by Lu Sichin. I, oh, I hope I said that correctly. I really did look it up. But basically, this is an hard sci-fi. I'm not sure if it's first contact with aliens. I actually don't know much about it, except that every time I say I like sci-fi, people are like, have you read The Three Body Problem? And the answer is no, I haven't. So I'm putting it in my bonus TBR just in case I'm feeling like some hard sci-fi during the month of April. And the final bonus book I have for April is The Queen of the Tear Lane by Jessica Johansson. Now from what I know about this is there is this girl who has been raised to be the future queen all her life and then suddenly they come and they try to kill her. And it's like in the future but there's magic so is it really Star Wars? I don't think it is, but it does sound really interesting and I would like to read it because, I don't know, I read the synopsis a while ago and I put it in my cart and then I realized that it was on Scribd and I already have Scribd so I might as well read the audiobook for it. I really suck at giving book synopsises, but that is it. That is my extensively crazy and yet amazing, in my mind, April TBR. And I am so pumped to get to it. You have no idea how excited I am. And well, if you have read any of these books, please leave me a comment down below. Give, my, give this video a like if you liked it and don't forget to subscribe. I have nothing else to, left to say to you except that my cat has been in this video the whole time. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on my next video. Bye. Also, that <laughs> that um that thumbnail <laughs> was total BS because I don't have the physical copy of most of those books, but I thought you guys would appreciate a big stack of books. So, there you go. I'm sorry I lied. <laughs>